All right, now we are discussing about Apex Web Surfaces. So, what's Apex Web Surfaces? So, basically, we want to expose our Apex class so that other platform, for example, your website, your shopping cart, your blog, outside of Salesforce, can connect into Salesforce and manipulate the data in your Salesforce org and then return the response or the result back to your website or back to your shopping cart or back to your Facebook post or whatever you want to build, right? So now it's the other way around. We've discussed about connecting from Salesforce and getting data from other platforms, now it's the other way around. Exposing your Salesforce classes or Apex class so that outside platforms can connect to your Salesforce and get data and get things done. So we can expose a class as a REST service and as a SOAP service, okay? Let's talk about exposing an Apex class as a REST service. So what are the key points? So at the top of your Apex class, you just have to declare the REST resource annotation with the URL mapping where this can be accessed from. On this example, it's from slash account and then star, and then we can get the record. And also remember, you have to give that at HTTP get annotation for each method within the class. This get record method has an HTTP get method, okay? So how can you access this URL mapping? So basically you access this from your instance URL and then slash services slash apex rest and then what you define here for this example it's here so your instance dot salesforce.com slash services slash apex rest slash account and then whatever record you want to put there so that's how you map it we will try and test it in this trail okay so what can you do so the annotation you can do http get to read data or read records, post to create new records, delete to delete records, put to upsert record, up, update or insert, so you use put, but just for updating, you use patch, patch. So that's, that's all. And also remember each method, each exposed method has to be global static, okay? That has to be global static here. Okay, global, static, and then get record. This is the object. So that's how you do REST. Now, how do you do SOAP? SOAP can be accessed or can be exposed by declaring a web surface here, keyword. Web surface and then static account get record. So this now is accessible through a SOAP surface. That's all there is to it. Feel free to read through the details over here. But now we are going to go through the Apex REST walkthrough. All right, first step, I'm going to go to my playground, Trailhead Playground, and create this class case manager. I'm gonna go to my playground here and then go to the gear icon developer console. Make a new Apex class. This is from the previous trail. I'm going to close this classes, new Apex class, case manager. And I'm going to copy the code from the trail now, this part. So copy here and paste here and save. So now we have 
quite a few methods. At the top, you have to define this annotation at rest resource. So it's a rest resource. You can access it from cases and then start. Give the record the record ID over here. So we can we can have a get case by ID. If it's a get request, this will run. If it's a post request, this will run. It will create a case. If it's a delete method or request, it will delete a case. If it's a put request, it will upsert a case. It's If it's a patch request, it will update case fields. And you define what needs to be down, uh, done, what needs to be done in your code. So you can do whatever you want here, right? You can define your own coding. So that's how you 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 do it. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So now we are going to give it a try. Now we are going to give it a try using Workbench and access our URL there. So I am going to pop up my Workbench on a new tab. Let's switch a bit and agree. Oh, what's my login? Oh, I'm already logged in. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go to my tools or utilities and then REST Explorer. So services data version 47. Now we are going to do um, a post request, right? So here, point nine. The URL path that REST Explorer accepts is relative to the instance URL of your org. So we only need to provide the, the path that is appended to the instance URL. In the relative URI input field, replace the default with this. Okay. So we are going to services, Apex REST, cases. So what are we going to do here? We are going to do a post. So create a new case. Okay. We are going to create a new case. So it's going to be a post, boom, and then the body. So this will be connected, it's already connected to our Trailhead Playground, right? So it knows which org. But if you are doing this from PHP or something, you will need to put the whole instance URL here. Here, the, the whole thing, and then put this but from workbench you can just do that okay take note of that so i'm going to copy this we are going to create a new case with subject bigfoot siding whoa all right let's go back here boom bigfoot siding case so if i go to my playground um, and i go to cases there is no bigfoot siding case for now okay if i go to cases now and we can see all the cases we have. Just all cases or all open cases. See, there is no Bigfoot siding, right? Now we are going to create one by executing this and execute. There. If I show raw response, this is what our code, our class from here. Um, Post this right. It is it returns this case dot id. So we should have the id there at the bottom. Really simple, right? Because this is what we return from our code. What if we we change the code? Well, you know what I mean. If I return something else and I add something, right? It will add something to what's returned here. So if you're accessing it from PHP or Python or something else, you can do whatever you want, all right? So that's done. We have just created one new case and we have seen the response. Now, say we want to get the record. Now, we just put the record ID with a get method here. So say I want to get, get the case for Go back here. So it's a get, and I'm gonna paste that with the record ID of this one which we just created. Come on, copy that and paste it over here. Execute. 
show all uh, raw response. So this is what what's being returned here. Right? Pretty cool. Bigfoot sighting. But you can also get other cases. Say, for example, I want to get this case. Seeking guidance on electric and electric wiring. And I'm going to copy the, the record ID from the, the top there. Same thing if I paste here, you would know what happened. It will just show that case record with the raw response like so. Right? So you can play with the data. So that's how you get and post um, through the Apex class we've just created. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Now we're going to discuss retrieving data using CURL where you can be creative and do your Python coding, do your PHP coding or whatever you're using and pull data from entirely outside of the, of the Salesforce platform. Like for example, using CURL there. So this is going to be a bit longer. So I'm going to cut the video here. I'll see you on the next video where we are going to play around with CURL. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank <laughs> you.